Hi, welcome to vlog number five. Another week has gone by and another week where I feel as if I didn't get as much sketching done as I planned to. But I still filled a typical number of pages, which isn't bad going at all, considering I was a bit sick with a heavy summer cold the last couple of days. This week, the theme is definitely playing with new art materials, the result of a showroom visit and a goodies bag. So let's get going and see what I get up to. So here we are. This is my Stillman and Burn Alpha 8x10 soft cover, which I'm going to publicly state at the moment is now my favourite sketchbook for daily use. I'm just really loving the book. And this is where I'm up to. I started on Monday, I started drawing a very simple sketch of two boxes of Rubos tea from T2. I often like drawing shape first, drawing shape first, painting the, sh the, the shapes first because I find that it, it loosens up my line and it means that I end up drawing less lines. But on this occasion I actually drew the lines first and was trying to be careful not to outline everything in ink first. So that was a lot of fun. I also went through my watercolour marker collection that I had um, bought uh, earlier last year uh, and I was playing around with them as I had a um, showroom visit and I just wanted to work out what colours I already had. Come back to that in a minute. Okay, so for my coffee sketches this week, I decided to do a grid and I actually using the time in the cafe in the morning to actually write some um, notes about my workload and how organized I am and um, just bits and pieces. And I, I mean, I'm really obsessed with trying to work as efficiently as possible. And this kind of yeah, had a nice feel about it to actually kind of write these journal entries each morning while I was at the cafe. This one is the most interesting of all. And this was um, the result of putting a plastic envelope over the top of my paint before it was finished and getting these lovely textures from a mistake. Uh, I'm trying to contain my coffee sketches but on Tuesday one of the um, guys from the Table of Knowledge at my local cafe, uh, these guys have been having breakfast at the same, sitting at the same table for 20 years and I have gotten to know them a lot over the last year. Uh, one of them just decided to buy me a coffee for the day so I, of course I had to sketch it. And then I had a couple of days where I didn't really sketch very much. I had a parcel arrive and this parcel was a parcel of tea and so on Thursday I finally got around to sitting down and sketching it. It's a pretty uninteresting subject matter to sketch and one of the motivations for sketching is purely a record of when I bought one kilo of premium Earl Grey tea to see how long it lasts me. So it's kind of a record as much as it is a stunning subject matter. And then on Wednesday, I had the privilege of going to the Jasco showroom. They distribute a number of brands such as Winsor & Newton and Liquitex. And we had a lovely morning testing out a few new materials and talking about a whole lot of stuff, which is fantastic. And so this was just a very quick sketch of the Winsor & Newton watercolour um, sticks, which are a lot of fun. And then I finished off my page, doing my headings and doing some stamping. On Thursday, I decided to get out and use the um, pigment markers that um, Winsor & Newton had actually sent me months ago and I've never gotten around to use them, mainly because I didn't realise that their uh, major characteristic is the fact that you can actually move them around on on paper and that they are designed to be used on this special marker paper so that's what i did so here is a demonstration uh, of me sketching a teacup using these markers and this is the first time i'd actually used these markers i didn't really know the colors very well uh, so it was a very much trial and error uh, and you know fun working out as i'm going the only way to really test your materials is to just draw something a standard subject matter and for me that's teacup
On Friday, I had another architects workshop in the city, which was a lot of fun once again. And this particular workshop was all about measuring and different ways of improving the accuracy of your sketch. I've also been talking uh, with a friend during the week about wide angle perspectives uh, and when to actually formally set up perspective and not. So I was sitting in the train just thinking about all these thoughts and I looked at this scene and I thought oh, this is a good chance so I just pulled out my pen and just started going and what I was really doing was I I drew this section of it first and that is really um, what I could see without moving my head uh, what the classic perspective people would call the um, single point 60 degree cone of vision and then all I did was I just moved my head up and down and across and then added these uh, the handrails and the doors and the extra bits in relation to what I'd already drawn on the page. So I'm not doing perspective set up at all. I'm just drawing one part and then I'm, I'm adding the other parts purely based on relationships. And I want to come back to this and do a bit of a perspective analysis of it because I think there's a lot of really interesting ideas with that. Anyway, let's get going. Saturday, uh, Urban Sketches uh, monthly meet. I wasn't feeling very well, so I stayed home and instead I drew all of the little bits and pieces that we'd gotten from the goodies bag from the showroom visit and I tried to have another go with the watercolour marker so I don't have the full range of colours but this was kind of mixing the blues and the yellows to get some greens um, and it's a lot of fun. I did this sketch in order to go through what was in the box and to put the things away so little colour swatches and a few markers and a watercolour brush and these watercolour um, sticks. So you're probably wondering okay how are all these things going? I haven't really had time to test them fully but I will show you that in the back of my book I did a few more um, scribble markers at the time. Uh, you can see that most of the time the markers bleed through. The pigment markers don't bleed through as much but they still do a little bit and the watercolour markers um, are pretty good that's one of the things why I think the watercolour markers are very very interesting uh, and then the sticks so I just did this very quick test of the uh, Winsor & Newton watercolour sticks which I actually like the feel of as crayons better than the Daniel Smith ones which are a lot more vibrant which are a lot more true to the actual pigments but they have a tendency to be soft and a little bit messier to use. Still haven't really tested these fully but this is just you know my playing around initial things and then I did some watercolour mixing with these water those watercolour markers before I did the sketch and really that's this week. Um, Monday still to be done and so I think the last thing I need to do is to fill up some of the pans in my watercolour kit because they're getting low. I know it's hard not to get really excited when you see rows upon rows of coloured pens and paints and pencils and I've certainly tempted you with that this week. And yes, it's really fun to test out new stuff, but honestly, I'm really happy with my current sketching kit. In fact, more than happy, I love the selection of my tools and the colours I have. Sure, I might tweak a colour here and there, but overall it's fairly stable and my big goal is to get more out of my existing kit. It's not to get more stuff in the vague hope that my work will magically improve if I have a new colour or a new pen. I also think that it takes a lot of time and concentrated effort to really get to know a tool well uh, and to see how best to use it. Uh, I don't often have the time or the energy to really put that in that effort in so sometimes my new materials don't get used very much it can be really good for getting me out of a rut or improvising and try something different uh, and I'm always looking for a fast tool something that I can apply color really quickly and much easier than watercolor it's been really good for me to use some markers again this week I do really love using them I think it's the architect in me uh, but that being said a marker will never replace watercolour. So it's good for a diversion, but it's certainly not a long-term goal of mine to be marker queen. So 
I'd love to hear from you. Are you obsessed with buying new materials and do you really put the time in to get to know them or do you just have a little bit of a play, get a bit frustrated and then never touch them again? I'd love to hear your thoughts so please leave a comment below. Until next time, keep sketching and have fun!